Good morning, and welcome to Saints Joseph and Francis Savory Parish. Our celebrant this morning is Father Ryan. Now please rise if you are able and let us sing number 610, Come You Faithful Raise the Strain, number 610. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. And so, brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I would like to invite all the children to come forward for the children's liturgy of the word. My dear children, you now go forth to hear God's word, to praise God in song, and reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so that together we may celebrate the Eucharist. Go in peace to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
If you'd like to follow along this morning with the Bible readings, they're found near the back of your hymnal at number 1169. 1169 near the back of the hymnal. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to, to God. God. The response is, Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way that we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, O oh 
open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A ring, the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way. Now Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were, that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And he said this, and as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave, gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their hearts and minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses, witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I was sharing with our, our liturgical ministers in the sacristy before Mass that I'm getting ready to head off to a, a three-year program for, um, for uh, learning how to be a spiritual director for priests and seminarians, and so I'm going to be gone this week and, and everything. That I'm, um, in preparation for this, we were given some things to, to pray with and, and whatnot to you know, begin deeping, or digging a little deeper into our own spiritual life. And one of the things that, that we're praying with is um, asking the Lord to reveal to us what, is our, what does he see as our deepest wound? You know, where, where do we need to be healed the most? Where does he see it? And, well, <laughs> the Lord never ceases to amaze you and remind you just how broken and beaten up and wounded you are. And as I've been praying with this, though, is it, it he doesn't just leave you there in that, that brokenness and in that woundedness. He also shows you, you know, his fidelity and his love and how it's not our treachery that he defines us by, but our faithfulness and our love, and that he continues to, to work in our life. And that's, that's precisely the Easter message, is that we're not defined by our sins and our failings, but we're defined by the Father's love for us. That it's not sin and death that is the hallmark of our life, but rather it's life and love. And this is what we are called to be witnesses to. We heard both in the, the first reading and in the gospel. You are witnesses to these things. But oftentimes we don't do a very good job of that. I know I don't do a very good job of that. Sometimes I focus a little too much on my sins and my failings and my brokenness. Sometimes in my own heart, that's all that I wallow on. That's all that I focus on. And how often do I forget to remind people that Jesus is alive? Like, God is alive in this world. But that's precisely what, 
what we're called to do as Christians. And not only that, it's not optional. You don't have the option to just keep your faith and your, your relationship with God just bottled up inside. It's not just about this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ that's meant to be shared, that's meant to be on display even. But as Catholics, we're really bad at this. We, we don't do a very good job. We get uncomfortable with, with sharing this. First of all, because we get really uncomfortable with sitting in silence and sitting with those thoughts that we don't really want to think about or those memories we don't really want to think about or those broken things that we don't really want to think about because then we're reminded of these things. We're reminded of the embarrassment or the shame or the guilt. But if we do actually have the courage to sit with that, to sit in the uncomfortableness of silence, then we also have the ability to hear God break through that. And he speaks to us, and what he says is your name. And he reminds you of how loved you are, and how precious you are, and how glorious you are. But then, when was the last time, though, that we actually sat with this and shared it with our spouse about why Jesus matters, why I believe, why have we committed ourselves to being married in the church, to raising our family in the church, to raising our children in the church? When was the last time that we had an honest conversation about what my relationship with Jesus is like with the one who I've, I've been promised to make a saint one day, our wife or our husband? Even more so, when was the last time we shared with our children why Jesus matters? You know, it's not just that, well, you go to Catholic school, so that's good enough, or that you're in religious ed, so that's good enough, or I want you to get the sacraments, and so that's why we believe. No, no, no. What's the real reason? What, what's going on here? Let's dig a little bit deeper. Like, why does Jesus matter not only to me, but why should it matter to you? And then, let's get crazy. When was the last time we shared that with a friend or a coworker? Especially in these day and ages where it's, you know, becoming taboo to say Merry Christmas or Happy Easter or anything like that. God bless you. When was the last time that we actually shared with someone that isn't in our close circle that, yeah, I'm Catholic and that means something and that it defines my life. That I believe in a God who gave up his life for me so that I wouldn't be stuck in my sin and in my brokenness. But that he freed me, and he freed you too. And his love is worth learning more about. That's awkward, and it's uncomfortable. But it's also not optional. Because you are witnesses to these things. And sometimes we think that, well, I don't have the right words. I don't know how to, you know, make the perfect argument to rebuttal whatever someone throws back at me. You don't need to. God doesn't ask you to be a theologian or to have all the right answers. At the end of the day, faith is taking the word of a witness. And if you're not witnessing to it, then who are they going to hear it from? We used to live in a society where society was shaped and formed by Christian values and ethics and morals. We no longer live in that society and we can't be comfortable enough with just saying that's, that's okay. We have to be willing to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in one God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe that God is not dead, but he is alive. And that he has forgiven me of my sins. And there's true life that comes from that. Because I believe in love. And I believe in life. And I believe you do too. Together, let us stand and profess what it is that we believe. I believe in one God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's great love for us, we turn to him now with the prayers of this community and family. Our response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer for the Holy Roman Catholic Church, for a steadfast faith in divine providence, for hearts open to feel the fire of love in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. For people of every race and religion, for deep respect for the sanctity of human life, we pray especially for children who are suffering the devastating effects of war and famine, for food, medical supplies, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. For St. Joseph and Francis Xavier Parish, for a continued commitment to grow in faith and discipleship during this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our, our prayer. For all who are sick in body, mind, and spirit, we pray especially for the sick of the parish, for Art Devereaux, for Colleen Bradley, for Ann Kanzer, for consolation, hope, and healing. Let's pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in death, we pray especially for our beloved departed, for Emilia, Emilia Vicencio, for Carol Hansen, for Don Hannigan, husband of Nancy Hannigan, for Ron Leonard, father of Catherine Friedman, for Suzanne Fazio, mother of Tom Ostrom, for R.J. Fox, son of Bert and Sarah Fox. For the glorious light of the resurrection to overcome the darkness and bring all souls to eternal life. Let us pray, pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those held in special intention at this Mass, for Lou Gluns, Molly Harris and Mary Conway Keeley. Let's pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us also pray for Father Ed Harnett, who on Friday celebrated his 66th anniversary of his ordination. And let's pray for an increase in vocations to the diocesan priesthood, religious life, dedicated single life, and holy matrimony here in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and particularly from our parish, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is only one collection today, Ushers are taking up the collection during Mass, but we welcome and appreciate your electronic donations through PushPay. Please note that there are also QR codes inside the back cover of your hymnal for donations. And as always, thank you very much for your continued financial support of our parish.
please join in singing number 625, Day of Delight, number 625. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, who praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life restored to, to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once we were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us all, also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Are there any ministers of care going out to nursing homes, parishioners' homes, or the hospital with Holy Communion? Please come forward. for one minute, please. <laughs> Thank you. You are to be a sign of the support and concern this church has for the sick and the elderly. Visit them, share with them the word of God and scripture. Pray with them for the church and the world. When they cannot gather with us on Sunday, bring to them the body and blood of the Lord. So make us one in a holy communion. Let us pray. <coughs> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in the flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So just real briefly, as I mentioned uh, during the homily, I'll be gone this week, uh, beginning a three-year training program to be a spiritual director for priests and seminarians. Um, so I'll return next Saturday, but um, please pray for us and just know that we're praying for all of you as well. The Lord be with you. Yes, Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing number 613. At the Lamb's High Feast we sing number 613. <laughs>